Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to review Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy, either Chevalier or Chevalier. I, I, I honestly don't know. I was saying Chevalier, uh, but I watched the video and the person said Chevalier. So I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh, but this is the book. <laughs> um, I read this book in a day and a half, two days, um, and that's not normal for me. Uh, it's very uncommon because I'm a slow reader, and even though this book is uh, under um, 300 pages, uh, some people would read this in a day. Uh, I normally need a week to read a book like this, um, because I don't, I, I don't always have time to sit down and read. Uh, but maybe because it's summer, I'm on vacation, maybe because of that. But I also think that the writing style had something to do with it. It's the first thing I want to say about this book, is that the, the writing uh, flows by really nicely. It's very accessible and it is not superficial. Sometimes people think just because it's a quick read, it's very superficial. I don't think it is. Um, I think it has the right amount of description. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it, I have to say. I think the writing is beautiful. Um, this is a fictionalized account of uh, the relationship between the girl in the painting, girl with the pearl earring, and the artist, Johan Vermeer. I don't know. This is set in the Netherlands in the 17th century. Um, this is about Griet. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Um, she's 16, I believe, in the beginning of the book, and she has to move and work for this family, uh, Johan's family, um, as a maid, uh, because um, her family is having a hard time um, getting enough money to pay the bills and get food on the table, um, so she has to leave and go work at this house. Um, and this basically follows her for a couple of years um, and how she develops during that time. Um, I consider this a coming-of-age novel, um, not only because she's really young, but also because she is in a way forced to work and having to deal with people who sometimes are not very nice to her. And the fact that she's away from home, even though she is more or less in the same area, she can she can walk home. <laughs> um, it just makes us think about how we get so stuck in our own routines and the people we talk to, and when we are put in an uncomfortable situation, we have a hard time uh, dealing with some issues. Um, so it's really interesting to see her grow like that. Um, she is a very down-to-earth girl, but I have to say I was, I was, I, I, it's not like I don't like her character, but I wasn't always a fan. I think that we can attribute that to her age, uh, but I think that sometimes she was quite insensitive and childish, um, and frankly, annoying but um, there were also very interesting moments uh, of character growth and development that I, I found to be very um, interesting for the story. Uh, they needed to happen and I'm glad they did because otherwise it's just it would this character wouldn't have enough um, to be the protagonist of the story. Uh, I honestly thought that the relationship that she had with her boss, the artist, Johan, uh, was going to be different, but I liked the way it was portrayed in the book. I found this to be a very concise historical fiction coming-of-age novel. Um, some of my favorite things have to do with domestic life. I really like domestic life scenes and I like uh, books that talk about the relationship 
they maids have with their um, employers. Um, I like the contrast of class, in this case lower working class and um, upper class, even though I don't know if they're really upper class, like mid, upper, mid to upper class. I, I, I also enjoyed the clash um, between the two families and their beliefs. Um, this is set in the Netherlands and uh, th there is some degree of um, discussion about Protestants and Catholics. So I enjoy that. Um, I think it, that, that part was really fascinating. So yeah, uh, if you are a fan of historical fiction, um, or if you are but sometimes not a fan of those really dense historical fiction novels and you want something a bit lighter, I would recommend this. It's a perfect historical fiction for summer, really. Um, this is divided into four parts. Uh, each part is a different year, and within each part you don't have chapters. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Um, you have a break like this, and you can argue that that would be uh, the end of a chapter and the beginning of another one. If you are planning on reading this book, um, you probably shouldn't watch the rest of this video just because I want to talk about like two or three, um, two or three very specific things. So if you haven't read the book, um, maybe you can save it and watch it later. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind the spoilers or if you have read the book, I'm going to talk about two or three specific things. So um, her character, Griette, I was saying that sometimes she was very childish and annoying. Of course, we can say that that's just a normal behavior for someone who's 16. Um, I tell my students all the time, sometimes you're very annoying when you are a teenager, but um, I don't think it was just that. Uh, the first, my first warning was when she found out that um, Johan's family was Catholic because uh, they live in the same area, but there's this um, part of the city or, or village. It's called the Papist Corner, and that's where Catholic families live. And they're sort of separated from the others, even though they get along just fine. They, they work together and they keep it to themselves. They don't um, talk about their faith that much. And I think that's the only thing that really separates them. And her first reaction was they're Catholic. And this is coming from a girl who, who comes from a very humble um, household. And maybe you can blame it, blame it on her upbringing, but at the same time you can't. Because later on we find out that her father actually worked with Catholics before and he says that they're just people like us, they're the same. They eat, they drink, they play games, they believe in God, they're just like us. Um, so it seems to me like she was raised in a house that really doesn't have an issue with people proclaiming their faith differently, but she, I think that she's still very sort of influenced by others. Um, and this continues throughout the book. Like every time they do something different, she, she mentions the fact that they're Catholic. Um, and I find that to be a bit, I mean, in the beginning, maybe it's um, okay, but then after she met them and after she, she after being there for so long, maybe she could have uh, re retired their argument. Um, one thing that I found fascinating, and that's what I mean when I talked about the clash, is that because she's Protestant, um, I believe Protestants don't have uh, pictures or figures of Christ or scenes from the Bible around the house, and Catholics do. Uh, if you're not aware, I, I'm, I am from Portugal and we're a very Catholic country, so it's very, very normal for us to walk into someone's house for the first time and see pictures or figures or little statues and stuff. Um, so I can't really relate to her 
feeling uncomfortable. I understand why she's uncomfortable, but I can relate to her. It's very difficult for me because I'm used to it. <laughs> Um, but I like that clash. I, I, I found that to be very interesting that she obviously she was she was working there. She can't ask the family to take down the pictures and the figures and all of that to accommodate her faith. Um, but I do think that she could have talked to someone, um, her boss's mother-in-law, uh, who was actually the owner of the house. Um, appear to be very just someone who is very easy to talk to and maybe she could have helped because she was sleeping um, in um, a small room like a sort of a storage room or cellar and there was a huge picture um, I, uh, I believe of Christ in front of her bed uh, and she just she, she covered it up uh, she wanted to remove the picture but obviously she felt like it was not her place, so she covered it and that way she could sleep better. But I do think that at times she talked a little bit as if she was better than others, uh, even though she came from a very humble background. She was always in competition with the other maid who was much older and had been there for years and years, um, as if like I'm winning, I won this battle the boss defended me um he wants me to do things that he would never ask you because he doesn't trust you but honestly it felt like sometimes she was picking a fight for no reason at all um what else uh also uh, i was surprised to know that their relationship um between griet and johan was not a romantic one and she definitely wanted that but i still i'm still thinking if he did it felt like sometimes he was treating her like um someone who's learning and i think that he realized that she had some natural i wouldn't say knowledge but she it's not like she knew some things but uh, she had a tendency to, she had a good eye for colors, for uh, placement, um, angles and all of that in a picture. And I think he noticed that it was a very natural talent of hers. I think he looked at it as a teacher-student moment. And I, I, that's not what she was thinking, obviously. Um, but I think that uh, she also thought that she thought that he would come around and actually fall in love with her. And when, when her feelings became stronger, more explicit, that's when she began, began to, to have an attitude with other people. And I wasn't a fan of that. He, she is someone who makes enemies easily. Um, the first time she meets the, the boss's kids <laughs> and the children uh, they have four girls a baby boy and at the time this is in the beginning of the novel um the the artist's wife johan's wife uh, katharina she's she's pregnant with their sixth child and the first day she me she meets the children not even two hours in and she's already she's already slapping one of them um, I, I don't have, I'm, my problem is not with the slapping, I understand this was written in the, not written, sorry, I understand this was set in the uh, 17th century, so it's, my problem is not with the slapping itself, my problem is that, um, first of all, she didn't even try doing things differently, or approach the little girl differently, some kids are going to be challenging, but maybe that was the normal thing to do back then, but again, Coming from a humble place, coming from a humble household with two younger siblings, um, starting working at a place because your family is struggling financially. And the first thing you, you do is to slap one of the children who ended up being the most difficult, the one that actually got her into trouble the most. Um, it just feels very careless and she is portrayed as someone who's very responsible and caring 
But her attitudes are the opposite. Her actions are the opposite. She's very careless. She doesn't think. She's just very quick on her feet. Not in a good way. And then she's surprised that the young girl is giving her trouble. Of course. <laughs> what were you expecting? <laughs> Um, the same thing with the, the other mate. Obviously, the other mate feels a, a bit threatened. That's normal also. Um, and in the beginning, she tries to tiptoe around her, so she's not so upset. But then she just gets tired of it and confronts her. And does it in a way that it feels like she's saying she's better than her. Um, so there were moments that I was not the biggest fan of Griet. But anyway, I enjoyed the book. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, obviously, this is a fictionalized account. I think I've mentioned it uh, about a relationship that has nothing to do with um, what actually happened. Uh, it, it is not historically precise or accurate. Um, but I really liked uh, the whole context, historical context that we have, um, and I appreciate the author for um, for all the information she gives us, but also the research that she had to conduct to write this book. So this is a recommendation, obviously, uh, because I enjoyed it. Let me know if you have read it or if you're thinking about it. Uh, let me know if you have read it and watched the entire video. Um, do you agree with me or not? Uh, I feel like a lot of people like this book so much and they like her character so much that I feel awkward saying that I didn't. Let me know if I'm just way off, but um, that's about it for now. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please let me know down below in the comment section and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.